What's the deal? It's your boy, Mr. Will. And you are now tuned in to Wilson Block of Thou Wow here on the Seattle music scene. And we got a very special guest with us on the block today. Kings, okay? Up, you know what I'm saying? South End in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Honored to have you here with us for this exclusive interview. You know what I'm saying? It's been a been a minute. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, trying to trying to catch up with you for a minute. Yeah. And mostly it was my job though. I spent a lot of time at work. So no doubt. Yeah. No, hey man, you know, we gotta pay the bills. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, you know, we first saw you perform at Othello Block Party. You okay. know what I'm saying? With Abyssinian Creole, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Gabriel T.O. Dros, you know, big shout out. Yeah, you know that's what my I mean? boy. Was. Um, and I just remember, you know, th those are one of the few block parties that I was actually able to get to. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Actually able to, you know, attend. Go you to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I just got to say, man, the energy was electric. Yeah, I mean, it was Your dope. stage presence is like out of this world for real i appreciate you thank you yeah no doubt <laughs> so real quick man for our audience listening man can you just hit us with a quick background uh, my name is kings uh i'm from south seattle i grew up like rainer beach skyway beacon hill columbia city uh, went to a bunch of high schools was basically a every team. every neighborhood in seattle <laughs> yeah, well, every neighborhood in the south end right, like, okay, I, right, never, right. I, I, I lived in the central district for a little bit but other than that I never lived anywhere else in Seattle. But, but yeah. PC, you know, the east side, the north end and the west, I got love for you. Shout out Dub C. I got a lot of love for Dub C. Right, right, um, right. But, um, yeah, just grew up in the south end, running around being a knucklehead. Started uh, in high school. I met uh, this group of cats who were going by the name Anonymous. Okay. And um, they had, like, a whole, like, Roots Live band kind of vibe going oh, nice. on. Oh, nice. um I always freestyled a lot, and they uh -huh. liked my freestyles. They pulled me in, even though at the time I was more of like a gangster rapper. That was right, kind of right, my. Right. kind of where I started with. Right, right. Was with that kind of thing, and then um, they pulled me in with them. It kind of just exposed me to a lot more, just a lot more music, a lot more hip hop music. And um, throughout my like junior senior year, I was basically with them. Okay. Then we we switched our name after high school to Room Colony. Okay. started performing around and then through that i met like a bunch of like who were at the time like our our ogs like vitamin d right b self yeah. uh word sayer and those guys kind of took us under their wing right, and kind of right. like showed us like word sayer showed us a lot about like rocking shows and yeah he often performed with a live band uh um, right. what he was with um josiri and they had a source of labor uh -huh. they were often perform with a live band and then um and then vitamin kind of like took us in and talked about like just song structure and like right, right, right. let us re like record over at the pharmacy and like he the pharmacy where, where was the pharmacy, the pharmacy right? that was, was the like, studio right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like on mlk and olive back in the day oh okay, that was, like, okay where yeah, it, yeah, it was like yeah, his yeah. mom's house at the time it's it's mlk it's and olive so it's basically like madrona not madrona but yeah, like yeah, madison yeah. valley yeah yeah the district yeah the district yeah, yeah yeah so he was um he was right in there um it was crazy too because like at the time during like the late 90s whatever the the south end cd thing was super heavy right right so it was right. kind of like a you kind of got to slide in incognito exactly and kick it and then leave type of deal right um but yeah he always made it home for me his, like his mom know my mom type yeah. of thing so no uh, doubt his yeah so it was like a that was like the big homie he right. had a huge influence in me just when it, just being a part of the scene at the time right 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 so you definitely from the era you know what oh I'm yeah, saying? like you go back with Seattle music. Like, oh yeah, 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 day yeah. one. Like oh, you're yeah. a day uno out here. You know, what I, I mean, mean? I'm, I'm probably like a day two. <laughs> right. I feel like I feel like there's a couple cats where like Silver Shadow was out here years before I was. Okay, there's mix a lot was like was literally. So you weren't born and raised in Seattle. I was. Um, I'm from Seattle. Yeah, uh -huh. but were you <laughs> we, born here? Though? Yeah, we. Uh, there, there was a lot of immigration things that was happening okay. at the time. So like you know, there were a lot of people that are. That were raised here, that were born here, but they can't right. talk about it because they could get deported or whatever. Oh, okay, you know, gotcha, all gotcha. kinds of kind of things. Like yeah, that. yeah. Because I'm from Pasadena, but I wasn't like born there. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. So I gotta like you know be forthcoming with that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? right. But I, um, I got I got here when I was like six. Okay, yeah, yeah. but you still more yeah. than half your life. More than you know yeah, most of you know? it, most of it. And, so yeah, so yeah, definitely, definitely. But there was like there was, but for for the first part, I was like just a kid. Uh -huh. And there was already people that were out performing, like Emerald City Boys were already a thing, Kid right. Sensation was already a thing, uh, Mix a Lot was already a thing, yeah. and, and already had like a platinum plaque before right. before I got through middle school. You know what right. I mean? So like when I came on, there was already there was there wasn't as many places to perform if you did rap music, but uh -huh. there was. 
there was people who had already set up like one of the things that was that went made me feel like I could rap in Seattle was this compilation called a uh, do the math that yeah. tribal put out mm-hmm. and then another one called 14 fathom so we had like little things like that right. there's another one called seattle the dark side that was just all like gangster rap shit that oh, i like really? too yeah yeah it was like a bunch that came out when i was like in middle school right, going right, into right. high school yeah that kind of gave me the idea like oh you can do this here and, yeah. and then like a lot of the bay area cats would come up here and like perform or do videos and stuff right um, and what is we, it with the Bay in Seattle? I know there's like some uh, we type just of, just, just connect like the thing I is mean, so there is something there right definitely yeah. definitely that's like that's kind of like Big Bro we kind of got like oh so the Bay is Big Bro yeah a oh, little no, no. yeah I mean they have a lot of the things that you'll see in Seattle have started like our independent music hustle yeah we learned it from them coming up here selling music you oh know? really and like and like. And they would do that because, you know, if you're in the Bay, you have like 15 cities you can go for right. that are right there. Mm-hmm. But that's just never enough. You know, once you get those locked down, you're like, so how do I expand the hustle? Right. You want to go to L.A.? Yep. And then you want to go, where's next? And so it's like just straight up I-5. You got right. Portland. You got um, the Seattle Tacoma area. Yeah. And if you don't got warrants, you can go all the way to Vancouver. You right. Know what I mean? so like, <laughs> right. They would like do these tours. Yeah. They, they would set of like, especially like E-40. Um, sick with it records they would set up these tours and they yeah. would come up and they would do like any kind of festival or any in store right. any kind of show they could hook up and they would come up here and they'd hand out free music and then they'd go back and then they'd come back with more music oh, and you wow. would, and you knew who they were because right. you just seen them and right. they would and they would kick it with locals and like so like we kind of we soaked up a lot of game from them so you uh-huh. said the bay, the bay area had definitely had like you know their their you know you know uh contributions to seattle music. yeah i mean if we're gonna be real with it the bay area has contributed to music especially independent music in general yeah, for sure for but sure. definitely us being as close as we are like yeah, yeah we're we're super influenced yeah no doubt more so than la right yeah. yeah i noticed that you know i noticed uh i'm like hold on man we got a whole big metro between seattle and, yeah. and the bay you know what i'm saying you got portland you know yeah what I mean? yeah but Portland's kind of like us. We're kind of similar, and they also got super influenced by people coming up from California. And right. Like that independent music scene, whether right. it was like the street rap scene or the more like like what we used to call backpack rap scene. Yeah. Um, learning how to do that on your own because there was a lot of dope like Lifesavers came out of Portland. There was a lot of dope artists that was coming up out of uh, Portland yeah. that would kept it independent. My guy Luck, Luck, well, he'll go by Luck. <laughs> go, yeah, right. uh, um, Hanif. Uh, bro, you gotta link me with some Portland cats, man. Cause I've yeah, been Portland's looking. ill, bro. Portland's ill. I can, I, I, I'll, I'll shoot you a bunch of Instagrams. Yeah, um, cause, cause you know, I came to Seattle and um, you know, a couple stops, boom. You know, I met A Son and then right, you know, right, A Son. You know, what I mean, I met you know basically everybody. Right. You know what I mean? In Portland, it's like yo, I need that one connect. Yeah. That could like give me the walkthrough, basically. You know. Yeah. For, I, f- I feel like their music scene's a little more divided than ours is. Oh, really? But, yeah, because they be beefing with each other. Right, right, um, right. And, and like, fear of, like, they cast that beef with each other is more like a hood thing yeah. than it is a rap thing. There's, right. There's rappers that don't like, like, that are, like, more, like, uh, again, what we might call alternative rap or backpack rap yeah. that have issues with each other. But, yeah. But um, it's... I mean, would you say there's any of that in Seattle? At yeah, all? Oh, there's a little yeah. bit, but right. it, but most of that shit, most of the beef between rappers is like more street based. Yeah, and that's where you real see shit transpired between. Yeah, them yeah, real know. shit happened, right. and they just happen to be mentioning it in their raps right. because they're talking about their life. Yeah, but it's not over some rap shit. Right, exactly. Well, Portland has that. Plus. And it has my fuckers right. that are like just don't like each other. Right. It's like I don't like how you rap. <laughs> oh, you don't just, rap, I rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And in Portland's always been a little more confrontational. I okay, think. Yeah. I think that's part of their um, part of what the deal the Portland is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like even when I go down there skating as a kid, like right. you go like Burnside, and those guys were a little more, a little more hyped to get into shit. Right. Than, um, you know, I always say that you know people might disagree with me, but I always say that you know Portland is like that. It's like the gumbo of the West Coast. Like you get a little bit of everything. Yeah, in Portland, I feel that. You know what I, mean? I feel that. When you think of L.A., the Bay, and Seattle. Yeah, yeah, you get a little all of that. In yeah, the, yeah. I feel like we're all kind of like that too. But yeah, yeah but Portland, I, I, I can see that. You know, because in that. Portland, it's like, you know, Seattle. You know, it has, it has an identity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't really. Portland doesn't really have like a national landmark like that. You it know doesn't. I, but I definitely think that if you, when you grow up in Portland, like those guys understand. Portland. And yeah. that might, it's a different one than you're going to get, like, say, on, like, a show like Portlandia or, like, yeah. the idea of what the Northwest is. But whenever you talk to them, they have a very 
as soon as you talk to black people from Portland, they have right. a very concrete idea of what it means to be black in Portland. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, like, yeah. I mean, it's a thing these days. I mean, you know, being black in America, I mean, it, it's a thing. Yeah. You know no. what I'm saying? And, you know, got to keep your head on a swivel out here. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't, can't underestimate, you know, the system. And, like, a lot of the things that affected Seattle, like, when you talk about, like, coming up in the 80s, like, when gangs first came out here yeah. from, they came up from L.A., and they came out from Chicago. Right. They were hitting Portland first. Because mm. it's closer, you know what I'm saying? So they would hit Portland, then they hit Tacoma, then they hit here. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? And that's how kind of, like, a lot of the... There's a lot of connections to like streetwise. At least back back then, there's more connections streetwise. Because like someone who was from the same gang in L.A. might set up a spot somewhere in Oregon, Portland as well, then and then Seattle, and then you would be connected with these guys. You know what I'm right. saying? But I don't know if it's like that. No, I've been in the streets since fucking 1999. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we grow up. We gotta, you know what I'm saying? We gotta start got to start adulting. Yeah, yeah I got I got shit to do. I can't be <laughs> right. arguing with that. All right, so look, before before we get any further into the music, because, you know, we'll be talking all day about the music, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? We'll get to it, but I really just want to talk about, you know, life growing up in Seattle real quick, you know what I mean? So I know you mentioned, like, some high schools, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Well, were you a Franklin or a Garfield cat? Or... I, I went to both. Oh, you went to both? <laughs> yeah, went to I both. Mean, you know, this South for real. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I went to both. I yeah. ended up graduating from Garfield. I got kicked out of Franklin. Oh, really? Yeah, I was a troubled teen. <laughs> <laughs> I was out running around doing all the things that... Uh, and make for good do. rap songs later on. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. But don't get you through high school unscathed. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got shot in high school. I got stabbed in high oh, school. Oh, wow. But yeah, I was, I was wilding out. So, was tra- so you class of what? 97. Oh, so 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, was the know. 90s. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, and it's crazy. I feel like for like the youth right now is the closest it's been to the 90s. It's very similar. When I talk to uh, kids in high school, yeah. their mentality is really similar. Right. Their situations, the things they're facing are similar. It makes me pretty sad, man, because yeah. I was sorry. Well, high, high school was rough, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was man. rough. So, I mean, you know, I'm thinking about Seattle in the late 90s. You know what I'm saying? You know, when y'all still had the Sonics. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, that was a whole era of Seattle I missed. You know what I mean? I think the earliest I should have came up was like 08. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I basically missed that whole golden wave. But, I mean, you know, I came here in 2017. I, I still feel remnants of it. Yeah, you know it's, what I'm yeah it's out there. The energy's out there. I mean, would you say that Seattle music, you know, that, that there's there's pretty good, uh, like, camaraderie out here amongst artists? Can be definitely. Yeah. We don't we don't talk as much shit about each other. Yeah. Um, and then some of us, some people are really tight. You know, yeah. like. Like, and I think it has to do with, like, your generation right. and, like, you know, like, who you're doing shows with right. and, like, you know, like, things like that. Because people from my generation, like, like anything, anybody from, like, Grinch or the Physics, the any scholars, anyone yeah. that was on Sport in Life, right. like, I got, I got a lot of love for them to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, and if they're doing anything, if Spaceman comes up and says, hey, man, I'm fucking doing a, doing a barbershop school, you know, mm. I'm going to repost that because it's like... Right. I'm still kind of invested in his success. I still yeah, want to right. see him win, you know? Exactly. And uh, I don't know how it is, like, right now for people younger than me, but I feel like, for me, I still have a lot of those same feelings. And, right. like, just really, really want to... I'm really excited about when I see other people doing music and, 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 like, people from my generation coming back, people from younger generations doing newer shit. Yeah. I'm really... I'm really been bumping the shit out of uh, Oblay Reed. Uh, then I got this other young homie named Nobi who's really oh, dope. Uh, okay. My guy Glenn, uh, Tautua, uh, my guy Cham. I got a bunch of like younger cats that I really fuck with. And then right. I also like really fuck with a lot of like super ratchet South End, like right. uh, Toupe, TK, and fucking like a million shit like that. I like that. Right, right. South End Seagull. I, I, like, I, like I like rap music. Right, you know exactly. what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 I, yeah. I like music in general. I like yeah. art in general. So right. I, I consume a lot of different. But you know how to compartmentalize, you know what I'm saying, and show appreciation for the different, you know, yeah, yeah, different yeah, facets yeah. of the. Genre, you know yeah, I, mean? I think I've been I've been lucky in the fact that a lot of people my age get like super jaded yeah. about the changes that happen to the culture. Right. But like I kind of always kind of had that Wu Tang mentality. So when I came across a new style, I felt like it was something extra to add to your arsenal as opposed to something to be afraid of. Right. Um, or something that like oh now people don't want to hear this. And I've been like when I've been watching as the hip hop culture has continued to grow. The stuff that happened before never seems to get left behind. People yeah. just keep adding up more stuff, but there's someone who does it. Right. There's always going to be someone who does what people like. Boom Bap is like, that's like 1991 to 95. 
Mm. And there's still people doing it, yeah. like and right. like and like making a a good living, like the right. whole Griselda shit. Mm. There's a whole fucking scene around that. Right. Or, and then you could take somebody like Earl, you could take somebody even like half of like Tyler's last album, uh-huh. or you like you can see all those boom bap fundamentals are still in the in the music. And, right. and like as much as like you might have like a little baby or a gunner who's like you know ticket ticking and doing a bunch of different shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to push things like in, in another direction. Right. We don't lose the the foundation of what you had. And that's true for each thing that comes in. There's uh-huh. never going to be a time where like little trap shit uh-huh. doesn't isn't a part of the culture anymore. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, There's right. not going to be a time that, like, all these, like, whatever comes in, it just kind of finds a way of mixing, morphing, and staying with it. We exactly. don't really lose things. And you think it influences the future? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't think we lose things. I think we just keep building on it. Some people build on it in a way you don't like, and some right. people build on it in a way you do. Yeah, it's kind of like when you bake in a cake and you put the flour in there. Yeah, the flour, yeah, it might dissolve, but it doesn't disappear. It's not going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not going I mean? away. It's still in the mix. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, I got you on that, you know what I mean? So, real quick, before, because I know we get back into the music, I just want to ask this one question uh, pertaining to, you know, growing up in Seattle. You said South End, so so what streets were you growing up on? You know, give, ah, give me some blocks. I, li- I lived on, for the longest part, I was on 47th and, like, Brandon. Oh, okay. Columbia City. That's like where I got into most of my trouble at. My grandma's house was right there. Columbia City. They, they had the big homies around there. And it was different back then. This is like pre Tutabella, pre all of that shit. Like, oh, okay. This was double gun Columbia City. This was wow. crack vials around the fucking elementary school Columbia City. Oh, this is wow. like the old old Crescent apartments. This was right. like it was different. It was it was different. Right. Was, and, and, and Seattle really had projects back then? We had a couple, yeah. Like we had a couple, certified yeah, yeah. housing projects. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, wow. They look nicer than, say, New York's did. But, like, right. if you go up and down the West Coast, they look like typical. I mean, they were high-rises? Not not the high-rises. We didn't okay, have the high-rises. Right. Ours were always, like, one or two-story. Right. And kind of spread. You see that more on the West Coast, I yeah. feel like. You see those kind of, like, mm-hmm. joints. There's, like, a big one like that in Watts that's kind of like that. Where it's just one or two stories. Yeah. And, um, but it's, like, spread out. Yeah, it's yeah. hard shit. It's, like, and you... At one point there was grass, now there's dirt. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? exactly. But all that stuff got torn down, and like, yeah. um, like the what's now the Lake Washington Apartments used to be called uh, Lake Shore Village. Oh wow! That was uh, that the one was... right across from the water, right there. Just, yeah. yeah, right oh, there wow. in RB. Yeah, yeah that RB. one. That was wild. That was like we used to call that our little Queens Bridge. It was wild. so. What was what was Columbia City or RB back that, then? Oh, RB. Really? RB was no always question. RB always went harder than fucking everybody. Really? Honest, RB was never a game. Cause you got wow. Henderson right there. Yeah. You had uh, Graham. Yeah, Graham. You had whatever knucklehead niggas and Skyway was doing. Right. <laughs> and that all came down. But it's, it's crazy to believe because like if you look across the street from Inner Beach, you got Pritchard Beach, you got Sewer Park. Right. And that's like totally different. Exactly. Totally like different. Days, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Totally different. But it was it was always it was always the weirdest thing even growing up. Like right. how can on this side of the street it be crazy, and then on, on that, that side, side of the, the street, sun is shining. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, RB always had. It's also like there's a lot of things that people. So if you live in the South, and you might go through there a bunch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. Um, you know, when I first moved to Seattle, man, I would notice that uh, I would actually see more activity in the streets in the North End. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'd see two random dudes fighting out in U District somewhere. Yeah. Or you'd you know see like I mean? the whole Aurora situation. Right. I think a lot of that had to do with police presence, man. Oh, like yeah? back in the day, the police. Like, especially this one cop, RoboCop, he was all over the South Precinct. He was everywhere. And they were like, Beacon, Beacon, uh, Beacon all the way down. Oh, yeah, yeah, the one right there. That yeah. one, yeah. And that's every, that they, they, they were for everybody. So, like, oh, wow. Um, yeah, there was just, there was just, it was just Mark. a heavier, oh, no, you good. Um, there's just a heavier presence of police on us, right. which led to a culture of, keeping shit kind of out of the street like where right. people can't see it you know yeah. what I'm saying because is it well, like when I was a kid everybody did everything right there you were just standing right there selling dope right there selling right. Dope, whatever everybody was just right in front and right. then like over time the people who couldn't adapt were in jail yeah washed up yep. yeah you know what I'm saying so I mean, you kind of hit when you got transformed even as recent as a couple years ago I mean you, you know I don't, don't want to say too much but I mean you know niggas is still posted on the block oh, yeah. like this is 88 oh yeah <laughs> but I think in the, in the north end too like there was there used to be more money up there too yeah. so like I feel like in that early 2000s it really they took a hit uh-huh. and it stopped the north end stopped being the the middle class upper middle class like white neighborhood and, uh-huh. and a lot of those guys moved and, out yeah they yeah. started moving further south Gentrifying essentially the CD, yeah, only leaving the white folks who couldn't afford to go nowhere up there, 
Hmm. And then as the city got more and more gentrified, that became a place that people could afford to live. And so people kept moving up there. Oh, okay. and, and, and mind you, like, Aurora, like, certain parts of the North End have always had shit going. Yeah, always, oh, Like, that's yeah. just always. Like, I mean, especially, we're talking about Highway 99. Yeah, you know, like, and, like, you know, like, we in the South, and we're like, eh, North End. But, like, the, they no, always had crack, shit going. Right, and they always right. had shit going down, you know what right. I'm saying? And, like, in the last, like, whatever, since the early 2000s, though, uh-huh. It's just like keeps getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Now, how about Beacon Hill? Beacon Hill used to be lit back in the day, yeah. Yeah, Beacon Hill was. Uh, it, was thug, it was thuggish. It was. There was a little bit of that. There was. A, yeah. I mean, it's like everywhere. There's. There was like pockets. That's how Seattle is. There's like thuggish here, thuggish here. Really nice right here. Right. <laughs> kind of chill right here. You know, over right. here is kind of like chill, all right. right. Yeah. This one's great. You know what right, I'm saying? And they're right. not that far away from right. each other. So like, yeah, they're definitely there's a heavy like. But then he's like, I would say, like, definitely, like, Mexicans just running North Beacon. Oh, okay. Like, a, a gang of Filipino gangs in, like, the Central Beacon area. And right. then a gang of, like, other Southeast Asian dudes and uh, throughout South Beacon. And uh, a couple of folks and stuff was out there. Okay. Yeah, Beacon Hill is interesting because, I mean, like, was, there was a time it was, like, super south end, and then it was like, nah, we're not south end, we're Beacon Hill. Ah, right, really? Yeah. See, that's, see, that, yeah. That, see, that's the stuff I be, no, I be like, hold on. It's like, just be about alliances and how people feel about other motherfuckers, you know what right, I'm saying? Like, that's right. it. And so, like, it just be going through its own thing. Yeah, Every sure. like, Every place goes through its own thing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'd be like that. And in West Seattle, that's a whole other chapter, West Seattle, too. a whole other thing. I, I don't yeah. even... I don't even know about West Seattle. I know about White Center. Like that, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Like right, I don't even right, know right. what West Seattle really be about. Right. But White Center, I know. And that's like it's a whole nother cause it's on this side of that bridge. It's a whole yeah. nother planet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but they be out here. Yeah, I got a lot like I said before, I got a lot of love for Dove C. They no be doubt. keeping it like they're like kind of traditional traditional West Coast gang banging over there. Right, right, right. <laughs> Gotta keep it alive. Right, right. Keep it, keep it a G. Now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> keep it alive. Keep it shit wet. You can still right. run into like Cambodians with like Jerry Curls and Dicky suits right, over there. Right. So I'll fuck with them. <laughs> so look, I, I tend to ask, you know, a lot of Seattle artists this, you know, in LA, the Bay, you know what I'm saying? Those are like synonymous with the West Coast, you know what right. I'm saying? But, but is, is the Pacific Northwest, is that the West Coast? Yeah. You would hell say yeah, so. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, hell the yeah. The reason I say it is because you know we got the sound in the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, but but I mean the same way. Like, you can walk to the Pacific now. I mean you, you know can I mean? get there if you want to drive. <laughs> you know, like like for oh, instance, yeah, you, can. Yeah, you, you know can. what I'm saying? Like there are parts of like if you live in Merced or you live in fucking Daly, like I don't say Daly City, like uh what's that spot? Um, Fresno or something. You're not as close to the water. You know what I mean? Right. You but but your coast? state is on the water. Right. You're on the West Coast. You're on the West Coast. Our right. state is on the is on the Pacific Ocean. We, right. We, we, and then, like, if you look at the culture of it, the way that we talk, the way that we move, the fact that it's more car-driven than, um, like, train-driven. Yeah. Like a Chicago, anywhere on the East Coast, pretty much. Um, the culture of it sits together way better. Yeah. It makes sense when you look at the way we do things that, oh, this is definitely part of the West Coast. Right. It's just, I mean, California has a lot of motherfucking people in it. Yeah. So there's a lot of industry. So that's like you get more representation out of there. And like if you're coming from, they just wasn't, I, don't, I just don't think a lot of people in California was thinking about the entirety of the West Coast. They were just thinking about representing where they were at. And right. where they were at was in stark contrast to where New York was at. So, I mean, is it safe to say that the Pacific Northwest is maybe like a sub-region of the West Coast? I mean, I, I, maybe I mean, I'm making I, too much of it. I don't know. It I mean, is, it depends on how you want to look at it. I, I think, like, I the feel reason, like... The reason I, I ask is because, I mean, we don't call L.A. the Pacific Southwest. No, you know but... I mean? And that's it is. That's true. That's true. That is true. And it is. It is. You know, but we we just don't call it that. Yeah. So I just I just like to get people's opinion on it. It's not yeah. it's not like a life or death question. Yeah, no, I definitely I mean? consider us West Coast. I might yeah. say Northwest Coast more than right, okay, yeah. just West Coast, but but to say I but I say West Coast hella too. Like, right, 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 no doubt. All right, so look, moving forward, man, let's get into the music. You know let's what I'm go. saying? Cause you know, I checked out the band camp, man. You got, you know what I mean, you got compilations, you know what I mean? I was actually clicking some of them in <clears throat> you actually got quite a few singles up there as well, you yep. know what I mean? So so yeah, just just tell us about you know what I'm saying. Just give, give us a general overview of your discography. You know what I'm saying. You know shit. your first album to your latest album. Uh, so shit. All right. So my first album, <laughs> my first album that Gonna I was set a part you up of. For a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here for it. Yeah. Here. My first record was part of a group called Maroon Colony. Mm. We were a live band, again based off of the roots. Yeah. I was at Garfield High. We put that out our senior year of high school. 
we won this competition called the Dis is like Disc Makers Competition. They were part of so you heard of South by Southwest in yeah. Austin. Mm-hmm. They used to put on that I thing. Thought it was in Dallas. It's in it Austin. Austin okay. Yeah. And um they they used to have that all over the place and it would switch cities. So oh. there'd be like South by Southwest, North by Northeast, and North by Northwest. Oh really? Yeah, one year the North by Northwest was happening here in Seattle. What year and was that? That was ninety six, ninety seven. I'm gonna oh, say something. See, I'm a baby in this. Yeah, game. so yes. that year they had it here, they had a competition, like a battle of the bands, and people voted on who they thought would be the top five. And they took one song from each of the top five people, put it in like a compilation disc and put that out. And then people could vote online, I think it was, to do, um, to like who would make it, whatever. And then we right. had, it was like 40 bands, gets down to the last five. The last five do a show at Showbox. Uh-huh. And um, my, my band, Room Colony, was part of that last five. We were not expecting to win. The, the person who expected to win was this woman. This I, mean, I don't remember her name, but I remember she was like blonde and she kind of had like a black leather jacket. She looked like she looked like a real sad art girl who probably does a little bit of heroin. She looked cool, you know. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we won. Oh damn! Yeah, we did our little thing. And mind you, at the time, most won. of us we were seven, Most of us were seventeen. We couldn't even stay at the showbox when we weren't performing. Right. We waited outside. And then we, they brought us into the green room. Then we came out, we performed. They took us back to the green room with security and then took us all the way outside and said, uh, we'll let you know what's going on. And one guy in our, in our band was older, over 21. Mm-hmm. He stayed in with his girlfriend and was sitting there when they were, we were at Westlake chilling with the homies. Uh-huh. And uh, Where hey, was son, he at? it was a show box, oh. uh, which is like a show box downtown? market, like it's called now. Oh, okay, that's yeah. the downtown one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was the only one at the time. Oh, okay. Right, <laughs> and, right, right. Uh, and uh, we was down, it was kicking it with A Sun, as a matter of fact. Yeah, shout and, out. Yeah, we was down at Westlake kicking it, and then, because um, we had pagers. We said, 911, what's that? <laughs> and so we hit the thing, called the homies, like, yo, man, we won. Y'all got to get back here. And we ran from Westlake to fucking Pike Place, ran what? up in there. The security guards got us in there. We went on stage. We went all this equipment. But the main thing we wanted was to get our album recorded, mixed, and mastered and have that p- p- done for us at like a spot oh, wow. in Redmond. Oh, dope. So we fucking. How many cuts? I was like, I don't know, 12, 13, 12? 14. Okay, yeah, just whatever yeah, yeah. we had at the time. Okay, they was going to do it. Yeah, we did okay. We did all our songs. <laughs> if I had 20 songs, they would have did it. For yeah, that's, okay, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did that, and that's how we got our first record out. We were selling that at, like, school and shit. And then um, after that, I dropped a solo album called Mivi the Negra with um, Vitamin D did all the beats, except for um, two, my homeboy Ocean Costello did those. Uh-huh. Um, then... Uh, that 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 one actually kind of like put me into the scene. Like as Maroon yeah. Colony, we're kind of on the outskirts. I feel like, yeah. Like I said, there's still like Source of Labor and Vitamin who are kind of like trying to pull bring us in. Right. But once me and then the homie, uh, uh, my cousin Jav and Deshaun, they decided also to like kind of do their own solo thing, and they were they were the ones who actually brought me to Vitamin D. Oh, okay. And uh, once they started, once we started doing our own thing, and then with our homeboy Drew, we kind of like started having our own like. People really started bringing us through, like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you should come yeah, to this yeah. thing, you should come, then that's, we started getting more shows, right, and right, right. just, like, kind of going. momentum started to pick up. Yeah. I almost got signed to Sony. I'm glad oh, I snap. didn't. You almost, glad you didn't? Yeah, 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 because they were going to, they were probably going to shelf me. There was another artist they had, I forget his name, but back in the day, a lot of those, those companies, they would get a guy, and they'd be like, this guy, this is our guy, but then right. they'd see, like, oh, there's a couple other people that are like him. Right. And they might sign you. So that you can't put anything out, really. Wow. And then put out that person, and then you're not really, and then and then be like, well, you know, we had you for three years, nothing really happened. Let's just drop it. And that was always their plan. Wow. Yeah, you know, so that sounds like right too, man. Yeah, man, I almost got was... caught up in that, ended up signing that, not signing that contract, getting really exposed to like independent hip hop. Yeah. And that kind of became the way that I went. So then I got, I dropped, I didn't drop another album for a minute. I, I moved. I think I moved away. I came back. Me and my guy, guy Gabe, before I moved away, we dropped, or while I was moved away, we recorded and dropped an album, the Abyssinian Creole okay, album. Okay, yeah, T- tell me how Abyssinian Creole came to be. Uh, was, when I first heard the name, I'm like, Abyssinian Creole? Is it like, my, guy, was... he, my guy's half Ethiopian, I'm half Haitian. Okay. So he's Abyssinian, I'm Creole. Oh, We heavy. were like one of the oldest African like cultures with one of the youngest African languages. Interesting. And, um, both of our cultures have... Uh, Ethiopians defeated 
the Italians to stop themselves from being colonized. Uh-huh. And then uh, and then in Haiti, we had the slave revolt where we threw off the French and the only successful slave revolt in history. So we kind of looked oh, at wow. these, our ancestry and, uh, as like sort of like um, a testament to liberation and, right, and right, uh, right. freedom. Heavy. And we wanted to put that shit in our music. Like yeah. we were heavy on that, you know, like I met Gabe in high school, but we didn't really click until we were like, like maybe like 19, 20, 21. Okay. And then like we, uh, we were part of a, this group called Youth Undoing Institutionalized Racism. Uh-huh. And we were learning a lot about all this specifically institutionalized racism versus like someone's personal prejudice right and um traveling together having some like crazy experiences together and like we just realized that even though we were both from south both from the south end you know what I'm saying we both been through a lot of shit but we, we kind of represented the two uh, the two extremes i think of our neighborhood you know like the the sort of um the activist um giving a fuck about other people right, right, right. part of our neighborhood that's super like this the reason why people survived the 80s and 90s is because there's people that just gave a fuck right and then like the more street aspect of the neighborhood uh-huh. and but together we kind of felt like we really represented everything you know and at now, the would time, you say he's from beacon hill if we were to say he's from no like, no he from he's from like he lived uh no he, he lived on beacon hill Definitely, I think that's the first place he lived in the South. But he's lived all over the South, like okay. especially as a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but not just Beacon Hill. But wow. he did have a spot in Beacon that I think means the most to him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over by Ghostbusters. Because he just got hospital. that shot with the Beacon in the back, so it just. Oh yeah, yeah. You know we, I mean? we were living there then. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah, our yeah. backyard. So you remember basically. that shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were that was just basically our backyard. But we were like oh, okay. twenty five or whatever then, you know. Right, like, right, right. We just looked mad, yeah. You know? <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, he he got a cool look, you know. He doesn't look like angry or anything. Yeah. No, nah, he's um, he's super honest with his look. I think. Yeah. And um, but he is an angry person. He just chooses to 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 take that anger, and well, try yeah, to just, use I mean, it in a you way. You could be angry and, yeah. and still be a nice guy. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. Saying? He he just chooses to focus it toward making his situation better. But yeah. when I first met Gabe, he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. There wasn't really a lot of places to put the anger. Right. And so it went into music and conversations. And yeah, he's made some timeless albums. Oh man. yeah, I mean, I I hundred percent like I tell him all the time. I think he's a genius. I yeah. think he's like just an amazing artist. One of my favorite. One of the yeah, most influential favorite, yeah. artists Seattle, on me. Period. He's one of my favorite Seattle yeah. artists, hands down. Yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna go make some music tomorrow. So yeah. So then uh, we did that record. Super fun. But we so were literally it was just a song or an album. It was a whole album. We did a whole ab- oh, so, album. Oh, so it's not just the duo. N- yeah, no, it we was had an album. Yeah, the whole album. Oh, I was we were living in and we were living in Seattle, like, we, we Brooklyn, got... and the Bay when we made it. Oh wow! Yeah, because I, I was moving around, he was moving around, and we were just making songs wherever we but got together. But when you guys did Othello Block Party, yeah. you guys weren't you guys presented as Abyssinian Creole? Or, yeah, or that was just the music off the album. I think well, it's the name of our group too. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the name of our group. Yeah, because I'm thinking that's a whole. You know, I yeah. think I'm gonna see probably another project. Yeah, well, that's what we're trying to work on right now. We only did the one project. Uh huh. As Abyssinian Creole, but then like all of our solo records, we well, most of our solo records we've been together, or at least one or two songs, like working with each other. Our my last project I put out, A Safe Place for Us, is literally yeah. a companion piece to his album, From the Ashes of Our Homes. Like they oh, work wow. together, yeah, songs yeah, yeah, talk yeah. to each other. My his album ends with my voice, mine ends with his voice. We did a bunch of shit, like we were working yeah. on it at the same time, shooting each other records back and forth and right. like talking about how we wanted them to connect. Right, right. So right. we had like a joint uh, record release party. Oh, wow, that's heavy, man. Yeah, that's we did cool shit. Yeah, no, it was super fun, man. Yeah. It was super fun. Now we're working on a more traditional, like, Ab Creole album. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, Ab- the first album you guys did together, that was called Abyssinian Creole. The name of that album is actually Sexy Beast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was Abyssinian Creole. Sexy Beast, which was our nickname for coffee. We should oh, really? coffee, yeah. We're big coffee guys. Sexy Beast? Yeah. Because it's be like, because it tastes really good, but yeah, it really, yeah. it'd be fucking with your system, bro. Right. Oh, coffee? Yeah, yeah. 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 I love coffee. Me like, too. It fucks with us, yeah. Like, for, and I love coffee because um, a lot of because of Gabe, you know, like, yeah. Gabe, um, homeboy, Mocha Only, and then um, um, Rafa, Hopte. Mo- Mocha Only, he's from the town? He's from, like, he's from Vancouver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we heard Bears a lot of Yeah. Yeah, he, um, we would, uh, for Gabe being Ethiopian, there is something comforting and, and, um, like home for yeah. coffee. Oh, and wow. so 
him being my best friend, there's a lot of moments that were my most calm, my most chill. They're like the, the feeling that I'm trying to get back to when I'm feeling kind of frustrated. Yeah. Was with him chilling at his dad's house or chilling wherever, yeah. sipping coffee, having right. conversations, listening to music. Yeah. And so like for because of him, coffee became a comfort thing to me. Oh, and wow. then like I was living with my homegirl, uh, Raha, oh. rest in peace, for for a couple of years. And we would do like like, you know, Ethiopian or Eritrean coffee ceremonies. Yeah. We do that all the time. Mm. And that and those again created a moments of like calm and connection right. that and bonds yeah bonds yeah, yeah that that like that I'd be trying to get back to when I feel like right. walling out so it's like it's become a comfort thing for me no 100% doubt. right and that's why we named it Sexy Beast because it was, it was really just about us right, <laughs> you right, know right. <laughs> yeah no we, doubt and, and, and you know I think that's that's abstract man you know what I'm saying to like be able to convey a message with music that's not stereotypical yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? That actually had that's actually built it upon, you know, some type of cohesiveness with another individual. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I, I just think, you know, that's how you that's that's where, you know, you, you really can't argue with like we're gonna argue that vegetables grow naturally, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah, you may not like the peas, but they're good for you, you know what I mean? And you're not gonna argue with organic, you know yeah, what I'm nah. saying? So that's Yeah, I think it was a time too where like we were both trying to like figure out what kind of man we were gonna be, yeah, and feeling like a lot of the the um, role models that we had, um, we didn't want to be. Oh, really? Yeah, didn't we were. Like, we, we were like, yo, I don't, I don't um, like maybe a piece here, a piece there, right. like certain people, but there was so much ego and like hurt, driven, like just monster shit like a lot of the men I knew growing up due to the fact that they couldn't deal with their own pain yeah because it just wasn't a lot of places for men to do that like there's not now but there's more right. now than there was then yeah that was like considered kind of a weak thing they would they would then in turn become like essentially a menace to the people that cared about them right, without right, realizing right, it right, right, without realizing right. it no, at I've been all there. you know I've been that man at yeah some me point, too you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. So and that's... wanting to not be that wanting to be like yeah. yo like not even as a as in looking down on them, but like those are our those are our dads, our uncles, right. our big homies, our our our, ones, and our yeah. brothers. Yeah, out of love for them, out of not continuing the pain that they that they went through, we have to do something about that. Right. And Gabe was my guy that I got to like talk to. He was the only other dude that I could talk to about that shit. There was there wasn't I didn't have any other homeboys that were like wanting to redefine what masculinity meant. Right. They were either rejecting it entirely uh -huh. or trying to live up to the stereotype. Right, right. You know? Like overdoing, like yeah, over-masculizing. And and, yeah, and I didn't want to do either one of those. I yeah. wanted to ask, like, the questions. I don't want to just re react. Yeah. I want to think about what's, like, what's healthy. If, if my issue is that I'm watching these people become unhealthy for the people who care about the most, uh -huh. then I think the thing is I don't want to be unhealthy for the people I care about. Right. So that means not just reacting, but thinking about it, you know. Exactly, and, being conscious. Right. Exactly. And, which is where I think conscious rap comes from. It's yeah. trying to be honest and think about who you are and how you're impacting other folks. Right. And Gabe was my guy that I got to do that with. He like yeah. Just to ask questions, to be able to, like, no judgment, to, like, you know, he would come oh, up to me with stuff, and, like, we would just... And a lot of our music was around that too. Like, what does it mean? And like, we had, we had these different examples of manhood. Mine coming a lot from like street dudes, and his coming a lot from more like activists. Yeah. But the behavior of these men was the same, even if the things that they were doing was different. And like, these guys might be out pamphleting and marching, but they're still treating women the same way as the homies that was out there selling right. dope. And like, you know running around in cars and doing shit you know right. and like we kind of noticed that this kind of whole thing was similar and we wanted to, we wanted to change ourselves yeah, yeah 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 no doubt you know i think it's a profound statement that you made man when you said you know so you said something to the effect of you know just being conscious of how you're impacting others you know mm -hmm. being, con being conscious of the influence or the example you're setting you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um when we talk about you know being real individuals you know what i'm saying i mean at the end of the day hear what I say but believe what I do you know yeah. what I'm saying so yeah. you know you know you just gotta you know if you, if you talk it you should be able to walk it you know what I mean um one, one question I wanted to ask is um in your experience just being an artist you know what I'm saying what, what, what's your what's your take on like you know being a solo artist versus being in a group 
whatever, like or working with a band, right? Ooh, cause, cause it's got you. Yeah, I know it feels that way with me too. That's why yeah. I'm like, change chairs. You know what I mean? Uh, um, but, but, cause listen, I, I tell artists all the time. Most artists that I work with, you know, when they work with a band, you know, there's. And I've seen some successful runs mm-hmm. with some groups. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, I've seen, I've seen more or less the independent artists in the band struggle. Because mm-hmm. of the dynamic, more so than I say. I think they're both obviously have their pros and their cons. Yeah. When you're on your own, you're on your own. Yeah. And that sucks. But you also have complete control. You want to fucking make a hyper pop trap album, and everybody knows you as a flute guy. Go ahead. Ain't right. nobody gonna stop you. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> Go ahead. You can go do whatever you want. Yeah. And um. You could come up with the whole marketing shit on your own and do all this shit. And, like, when it pops, you get to feel good about every aspect of yeah. it. But, of course, if it don't pop, you might feel bad about every aspect. Yeah. And and it can it takes energy. And it takes a lot of time. It can consume you and stress you out. You know, right. when you have people there with you to share that burden, it makes it easier. Okay. But then the vision is not your vision. It's mm. our vision. So we got to right. figure out how we can incorporate everybody into this idea of what we're trying to do. Right. And I think that's whether it's a band or a group. And I, I feel like, but I think that when it comes down to it, people should do both. Yeah. I think you should, I think it's important to be a part of a musical community. Right. Especially if you want to make uh, money off of it. Yeah. You have to have a context. The people who pay for music, they're not just getting music. Like musicians love music, yeah. but the average person is paying and wanting to get into a movement. A moment in time. Right, right, right. Like, for instance, if you're a Young Thug fan, you're not just a Thug fan. You're a YSL fan. And that shit has a whole community and, like, way of talking. And there's multiple artists. And, right. like, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a... It's a whole ecosystem. Yeah, there's a there's a context yeah, yeah, for yeah. being a Young Thug fan. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, right. Or, you know what I'm saying? And so, I feel like the same thing is happens... You need that if you want to if you want to make money. You want right. to be part of something larger than yourself. Right. Um, also, it's how you grow, being part of something larger than yourself. Right. But you, know, you should I, always, always take time to make shit on your own because that is also a place that you grow. Because right. there's certain things that you're going to, like, whenever I'm in a group setting, uh-huh. I'm just trying to bring my A game because I don't want to fuck up what everybody's doing, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if I'm writing or if I have ideas, I want my best. I'm putting just my right. best shit out there. But my shit becomes my best through practice and, and, and utilizing it. I do a lot of that shit on my own. Right. And, like, make songs on my own all the time. Yeah, and so then, people should do a little bit of both. I, th- I think it should, you should do a little yeah. bit of both. Because, you know, I, I was really speaking to, like, you know, the logistics side of it all, right? Like, you know, look, you got studio performances, you got showcases, you got photo shoots. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I mean, the more people you have, the harder it is to wrangle them up. But right. also, the more people you have, the more opportunities you'll get because everybody can bring something in. Yeah. You know, so like, not everybody will, but, yeah, right. but everybody <laughs> right. could. You know, like, there's yeah. some times, like, when I was in Room Colony, like, the basis is like, oh, I got a fucking, um, he got an interview because he he's part of, like, the Garfield um, band, and the band got interviewed, and they were like, yo, we're gonna talk to this young bass player who's just kind of killing it out here. And they're like, what do you else do you do? And he gets yeah. to mention us, you know, so that kind of stuff happens, and right. then all of a sudden we're like doing little jazz festivals or whatever. That kind of thing can happen. Um, but also, I always tell people, like, if all you're bringing to the table is, like, you're a good guitar player, that's cool, too. I can fuck with that. Right, right, right. right you know? <laughs> but, so, so what, what showcases have you done? Have you, have you done, like, you know, bumper shoot, any, any festivals? Oh, yeah, I mean, I've done, like, block party, bumper shoot. you done bumper shoot? Yeah, we did. We did uh, 5,000, 8,000 people bumper shoot one year. Yeah. Uh, my homeboys did the memorial... Um, stadium. It was like 130,000. Memorial Stadium. Yeah, it's like right next to. It's like it was, it was part of Bumper Shoot too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We just it was just two different stages. Oh, was that the center down? It was at Seattle Center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where they do like soccer games and like a lot of a lot of high schools here get their graduation at Memorial Stadium. Okay. Um, and he they did that and like got to see that from the stage. Like holy shit, that's 130,000 people. <laughs> that's oh, crazy. Wow, yeah, I've done. Um, I performed for like 7,000 people in uh, in Vancouver at this place called the P and E. I done a bunch. I've worked. I've, I've, I've performed pretty much at every venue in Seattle. How is Vancouver? Think. The music scene up there is lit. Um, it goes back and forth. Right now, there's a lot of talented, really dope artists, uh, but I feel like they're not getting seen like they should. Yeah. There's like 
there's a bunch. There's rather my homeboy Mizzy and the Rose Boys, uh, my homeboy Uji, my homegirl uh, the Delicate, uh, these guys, um, what's his name? Dakota Bear. Um, uh, fuck, there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. There's a dope native hip hop movement up there. Right, right, uh, shout right. out to homie HK. Shout out um, Sierra. Uh, my, uh, 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 there's a, dope, a lot of dope Filipino rappers up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my guy Francis Aravelo, uh, Kimordo. Uh, then like obviously Kimono, my people are, it was on your latest album yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. that's like that's oh, like the she's, homie they're from up there they 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 are from up there oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah no and doubt. they're they're like that's the home <laughs> that's been like one of the like best supporters of my music and also yeah. one of my biggest inspirations they really got me into looking at live shows differently yeah um I even noticed you had an instrumental song on the app practically instrumental you know yeah yeah, yeah yeah on the album I always think that's um you know, when an artist does that, that's like high IQ to me. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? When, when I got it from my homeboy, uh, Us Wayne. He did three instrumentals on a project I did called uh, Between Saturday Night and Sunday Morning. Uh -huh. And we had, like, these instrumentals that were, like, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Uh -huh. And because uh, I like to add those little things in there. Right, right, right. I right, like, right. Little, I like moments because I... Other than just like being in my house listening to music or being a live show performing it, my favorite place to listen to music is in the car. Yeah. I like sure. driving, smoking. Right. And like just shit all the way up, exactly. middle of the night, like, about the lake. Again, you know what I'm like, saying? Like, woo, yeah. just dipping. And um, <laughs> in those, I really like if there's like a breakdown or like a fucking little key solo rah, or rah, like rah. something like that. I yeah. love, I love them. So yeah, I'm always trying to like add those to my music. Because now, once I started making beats, those became like kind of like a. Oh, priority. so you produced too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, see what they the, uh, a safe place for us. I did everything but two two tracks on it. Oh what? Yeah. You got Real Be Free on there. Yeah, that's the you, know, homie. Amazing, you got some cold cuts on there. Yeah, that's look, the homie. Look, I also see some some new names on there for me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, let me check this out. We was listening to it all day today. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice. just running around, you know what I mean? Um Yeah, I wanna get more um my homeboy Uji's on there. He's also from Vancouver. I wanna get more more between Vancouver and Seattle. I want to see like Tacoma, Seattle, Vancouver, Seattle, and kind of see like just kind of build up our region a little right, bit so that right. it's like people are when people drop something, if someone in Vancouver drops something, I want them thinking about when am I going to perform it in Seattle. Right. When we drop something, I want to think when am I going up to British Columbia because exactly. it's, it doesn't make sense that we just stay at home all exactly. the time. Exactly. There's a lot to utilize in this region. And there's and I mean? there's just there's fans, there's resources, there's so much stuff that like, Seattle rappers could get from performing right. in Vancouver and vice versa. Right. That it's like and then like and the situation between Seattle and Tacoma music wise just fucking frustrates the shit out of me. Like we really? don't we don't bring those guys up here. We don't go down there as much. And it's right. it's happened a little bit. There are definitely people who do that. I'm not yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, say yeah. no one does it. Right. But like Seattle has such a big such a greater lens on it. Like uh -huh. nation nationalized. And yeah. it's not a lot. It's not it's not the bay, it's not LA. Right. But it's more than Tacoma. So we should yeah. be we should be making it so that Tacoma cats Right can be up here also getting seen right. by more than just the homies. Yeah, exactly. And then Tacoma's a whole fucking city Man, a, that we're not trying song. to get you don't want fans out there? You don't right. want you don't want to up your fans from like a thousand people in Seattle to a thousand people in Seattle, a thousand people in Van, in, in Tacoma, a two thousand in Vancouver, because right. Vancouver's bigger than both of us. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, like right, so right. it's like and Vancouver's huge. Yeah. Oh right, it's right. It's huge. Right. There's so many more people there. And it's so much bigger than Seattle. It's Tacoma, like an LA Portland. type of size city. It is like, very much an LA type yeah. city. It's like they making movies there. Wow, they need wow, music for wow, soundtracks wow. up there. Wow, they wow, have wow. like it's a whole thing. And so if we, we thought our sound was lit, they shit is off the chain. Yeah, like, man, you know bro. They and, and they fuck with us. We can fuck with them. Shout out to my homegirls, uh, Nada. They need to bring the Grizzlies <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, playing, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> The Grizzlies and the Sonics. Like, yeah, you feel like it was special back then. We had the yeah. Grizzlies and the Sonics. Yeah, you feel me? it was only for a little bit, but yeah, yeah, right, it was nice. Right, it right. was, you know, that's crazy. All right, so look, let me ask you, um, what do you prefer more, studio performance or excuse me, uh, in studio recording or live performance? Uh in studio, definitely. Oh, oh, really? I got a lot of social anxiety. Right, right. <laughs> um, I think the the in studio allows me to like. Like you mean like recording myself, or do you mean like in studio, like at KX? I mean, just just what what part of the, well, the yeah, process? Yeah, what part of the of the craft do you like to do the most? Mine is the creation. 
I, li- okay, I like Chris, making yeah. beats, writing songs, recording songs, and then fucking with those songs for 150 million years to right. change every little thing right. 100,000 times. Yeah. I, I, I get so much satisfaction out of that. It's actually a chore. It takes more energy for me to get to put things out. Right, right, right. Because right. I'm having so much fun at this this first stage. Right. And then um, after that, it's definitely performance. Like I like there's a I like the feedback from the crowd. Yeah. I like being able to uh, see my songs work in real time. And there's um, uh, my performance style is one where I try to tap into the emotion of that song while I'm on stage, right. which often allows me to express feelings that I'm, I'm still feeling that are related to that. Uh-huh. And therefore, a lot of times if I have a really good show, I come out of that show with a different appreciation of my situation, maybe some different ideas of how I want to move because right. I've just I've gotten get to have these feelings move through my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah so, so music's refreshing. Yeah, you know yeah. For me, music is very much part of my personal development right. and my um and my growth as a man. Exactly. Yeah, no it's, doubt. It's, no doubt. We got that's have actually outfits, more important you know? to me than than anything other about it. You know. Right. Like, right. No doubt. That's what's that's what's up, man. You know what I mean? That's how I gotta be. Cause I mean, you know, <laughs> as men, like you said, you know, there's not too many places that exist for a man to Right. And you know I think it, like I said, it's changing, but it's changing slowly. Yeah. It's only now that people are recognizing how all these dudes are depressed and, and right. it's like and everybody thinks it's a new thing, but I'm like, mm, I don't think so, man. I don't think the shit is new. Yeah. I think our fathers and our grandfathers and our great grandfathers were all dealing with heavy depression and yeah. like when you in like trauma I and mean, you think about the way that some of them were how cold yeah. they could be how distant they might be i think they were all suffering yeah. the difference is now we have language to talk about it now a guy can say hey i'm fucking depressed but, but back then you couldn't you know what i'm yeah, saying and like right. maybe even if you did you might get jumped or whatever right, you know what i mean by the, you know by your, by your uncle or yeah I'd be like, what do you mean you <laughs> like stop that suck it up Suck right. it up. You yeah, know what I'm mean, saying? you know, we, we grew up around, you know, I mean, me personally, I grew up around different levels of it. You know, I was, you know, I've been around big bros and cousins, and then yeah. I've also been, you know, in foster care with just mm. staff that ain't just hands off. You right. Feel me? They, right. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's, you know, it, it very much exists. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's how I look at my music as a way of dealing with all that shit. Yeah. So, so what do you plan to accomplish through music? You know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, the contribution to the game and the culture. And I don't know. I don't, I'll be honest, man. I don't you think just, about, just doing, I don't think about the game. It. I don't think about the culture too much. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's not, it's not worth something that I'm that focused on. Yeah, I think yeah. about, like, when I think about what I went through music, it is um, to be the best version of myself that I can be for the people who have been the best for me. No so that's like my family, my friends, my son. Um, and I feel like that's what I get out of it. Now, I, you know, I entertain wanting to make music money off of it sometimes. And, like, there's been times that, like, music was my only job. All I did was sell music and tour. Um, but I feel like I'm at a point right now, like, I don't know if that's that's exactly what I want. Right. Um, just because during those times, I tend to hit, like, writer's block because I'm, I'm thinking about my art as a product. Yeah. And, um, again, I'm using it to help with my mental health. Yeah. So writer's block means that I'm not expressing something, which means I could be fucking up in some other level. So it's really yeah. important that I keep myself writing or right. keep myself creating all the time. I don't know, man. I feel like as I've gotten older, man, there might be a better way. I might be better at balancing the things now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, me personally, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, you know, whenever I, you know, run into writer's block, you know, I deal with depression too and all mm-hmm. this shit. So when I run into writer's block, you know, sometimes you got to put the pen down and just live a little bit. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you know, you'll end up grab, reaching for the pen soon yeah. enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, for me, a lot of times when I stop writing, um, I just feel worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my feelings, <laughs> my feelings get blocked up. I get. I feel like I feel like I don't understand what's happening to me. And there's, like, a certain kind of, like, confusion. There's something about being able to write it out, even if I just freestyle it yeah. and get it out and being able to, like, hear it back or, or read it back that makes you, like gives me clarity on what I'm feeling yeah. and that clarity takes away the anxiety the confusion like okay I'm upset because of this thing and this thing has deeper roots because of this and that and that doesn't do it for everybody but for me that gives me just enough breathing room that I can like relax and be like, okay this can be dealt with I don't have to react in this way and then like, create modes where I can change my behavior. Yeah. So the things that I might do that might be hurtful to me or other people based off of these trauma responses, yeah. I'm able to notice 
and work on changing until and it takes a minute but at yeah. some point my behavior is different right you know you see the change at some point yeah, yeah. and it's, that's been super important because I got this kid so like I'm not trying to be like I'm not trying to be hothead Khalil. You yeah, know what right, I mean? right, like right, I'm not trying right, to be right. that guy. Well, I think it's cool you you recognize that it is a process. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you know, it's not like it's not necessarily like a like a, a easy button. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. But you know, it's a, it's an exercise. But it is I mean? easier than not having anything. Exactly. You know, and I got homies that struggle with this stuff who don't have anything. That's right. not how their art works for them. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. They need something else, and I think that is, and so like. I also acknowledge that. Like, it's not an easy button, but it, it is a certain privilege in having something you can pour yourself into. Right. Because not everybody can do that, you know? Right, right, exactly. Some people have to deal with their shit in a totally different way. Right, right, right. And then, you know, I mean, shit, I think it's cool. I mean, you know, these days, man, there's so much, like, mindless entertainment. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That when you actually come across an artist that, you know, has proper utilization for the craft, man, it's, it's appreciable. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, for other, you know, artists who are true to themselves, they can look at that and, and extract from that. Like you said, you know, yeah, role models, you don't want to be exactly like them, but you can. I want a little piece here, a little yeah, piece there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I can relate to that. I know that's accurate. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, you know, the, the dudes that I was looking at, I was like, you know, I, I can't embody exactly who they are, but, you know, there's certain aspects of their repertoire that, you know what I'm saying, you know, I extracted from. Yeah, you know definitely. Um, so yeah, Kings, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where could people, you know, uh, find and follow you online? Um, uh, Bandcamp, Kings, put that in Google, you'll find my music, uh, at Kings Auto for the Instagrams, and I think, I don't even know if I'm on Twitter slash X, whatever it is. Right. Um, Instagram's your best bet, it'll be the same thing on TikTok, but I ain't got nothing on there yet. Yeah. And then, um, Autogram on Instagram. It's also where the crew, we post a lot of stuff. And then, uh, what else am I thinking of? What else am I forgetting? Um, we're going to do a YouTube performance series pretty soon, probably okay. starting in February. And then um, and then we got a bunch of videos on YouTube. Just, you know, Google the name. Otto yeah. Kings, K-H-I-N-G-Z, O-T-O-W. And you so, find everything I've ever done, pretty much, that I've ever put online anyway. <laughs> no doubt. All right, so... Uh, but yeah, man, so uh, if you got any shout-outs, man, let's hear it. Shout-out uh, the Good Foot up at uh, Clock Out Lounge on Beacon. It's like a bi-monthly we'll be doing. Um, this year, this this uh, this one we have coming up is going to be the homie Bamboo from L.A. Okay. Um, I think homeboy Cham and Noby's going to be there. Um, I'm going to be doing a little thing there. Um, it's going to be super fun. Shout-out my guy Mike Florent, always organizing that. Well, Shout-out my guy uh, Gabriel Tiojos for being my best friend, my longest-running healthy relationship. Love you to death, bro. Shout-out uh, my guy uh, Champ Ba for being my, my other real healthy relationship and just always being out here for me. I love you to death, bro. I want to shout-out uh, the whole South End. I want to shout-out to definitely the Central District, definitely Dub C. You know, those parts of the North End, you know who you are. And uh, the homies over on the east side, you know who you are. Shout out Robin Park. I want to, uh, yeah, man, just the whole scene. Everybody out here making music. Everybody that's, like, kind of doing their thing. Um, just, like, you know, like, if you're hearing this, I think, and you're part of the Seattle music scene, I honestly really feel like you got something special. And, like, the best thing that you could do is take care of yourself so that you can put energy into this thing and and let the world know what you got you know what yeah. i'm saying and that's that's for everybody everywhere but especially cats from out the hood i love y'all to death and um i just want to hear your voices heard and like see our lives change and all that kind of shit you know what i'm right. saying um shout out fucking 206 zulu <laughs> washington <laughs> hall because we right here yes sir uh uh, uh uh creative justice i'm trying to get a job with y'all <laughs> shout out there um yeah, man. And my mama, man. No doubt. That's what it is. I think, yeah, what I was going to say was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know what I'm saying, you directing fans to Bandcamp. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? In the, in the day and age of streaming, you know what I mean? It's convenient to have a platform that, you know what I'm saying, still allows the artist to make money off yeah, the music. Yeah. And I'm on all the streaming stuff, but go to Bandcamp first. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I'm on all that streaming. Yeah. Stream everything. I appreciate right. that. But, yeah, but definitely go to Bandcamp first. No doubt. All right, Kings, man. Thanks for coming right. through. Yeah, man. You know I'm glad we were finally able to do this. Yes, Thank sir. you, bro, you for hitting me mean? up and being patient. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, man. And, we, you know, we got we definitely got to dive into a lot of, you know what I'm saying, uh, some of the stuff you already dropped. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're going to be following back up. Nice. You know what I mean? All right, man. Wilson Black of Thigh. Wow, it's your boy, Mr. Wilson. Seattle Music Scene. We out.
Peace.